going. The recording is on. Welcome back, everyone, to our second lecture on BC213, The End Times. Uh, we've uh, just started talking about the signs of the end times. What are the signs that we should be looking for or looking at, uh, which uh, give us an idea or indicate to us uh, how close we are to the rapture of the church, the coming of the Lord, the end of the church age and the beginning of the tribulation. We're trying to understand or get some understanding of that. So the first two signs we said that uh, are very, very important. One is the fact that Israel has been formed as a nation uh, since uh, 1948. A second one is that Jerusalem has been taken by Israel and has become a point of conflict, a center of conflict for many nations. Many nations are involved in this. Right? Um, the third uh, sign that we're looking at is the Temple Mount. Okay, um, The fact that the Jews are ready to rebuild the temple. Okay. Now, uh, why is this important? Because from our understanding of Scripture, there has to be a literal temple in which the Antichrist will do all that the Bible says he will do. Right? He will set himself up in the temple of God, the Bible says. He will stop the sacrifices. And he will speak blasphemous things against God. So Bible is very clear. It's a literal temple. Now some people, you know, some people, uh, you might hear some people say that, oh, no, no, this is just a spiritual temple, not a literal temple. Uh, but we say, no, it is a literal temple because of the way the scriptures describe. In Daniel chapter 7, 8, and 9, what Jesus said in Matthew 24, when you see the abomination of desolation set himself up in the temple of God, what Paul wrote in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, say, talking about the Antichrist setting himself up in the temple of God, what uh, John wrote in Revelation 11, 1, that uh, the, the city is given up to uh, the Gentiles, and they will tread under feet uh, the city and the temple. Um, so, based on all these passages, we're saying that there has to be a literal temple, a physical temple, not just a uh, uh, a spiritual temple. Right? And the fact that um, the Jews are well prepared, they've made all the preparations ready uh, to rebuild the temple and resume their own sacrifices. That is again a strong indication that we are very close. Okay, if they didn't bother, they're not. We're not interested. We won't do anything. Then he'll be like, "Hey, where will this temple come from? How will it happen?" You know. But it's not like that. The the the, the people are ready to uh, do this. So it's a very strong indication. Now. Number four, I will just do a few more and say, is about the ten leaders that Daniel spoke about. And we will see this next year when we study the book of Daniel. I'll just give you an essence of what it, what that is. In Daniel chapter 2, if you want to... Uh, just follow with me. Uh, I'll just give you an idea, and then we will look into, into this in detail next year. In Daniel chapter 2, when Nebuchadnezzar has this dream, which Daniel tells him the dream and the interpretation, uh, he sees this great big image. Right? And... Uh, uh, if you go with me to verse 33, Daniel 2, verse 33, this image, its legs were of iron, its feet 
partly of iron and partly of clay. Right? And uh, so this image, it's it has feet of iron, legs of iron, which we will ex explain next year. We, uh, it represents to us the Roman Empire. Its feet, so its feet, which means there are ten toes, partly of iron and partly of clay. That uh, it's a, um, uh, and then you say, okay, what does that mean? Uh, if you look at verse forty-two, uh, uh, or let's say from forty-one. Um, Whereas you saw the feet and toes, toes representing ten toes, partly of potter's clay, partly of iron. This is verse 41. The kingdom shall be divided, yet the strength of iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay. Verse 42. And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. Verse 44, And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to another people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand for ever. So Daniel 2, 41 to 44, uh, Daniel is, uh, is talking about iron mixed with clay, the iron representing um, people of the previous empire, um, the Roman Empire, mixed with clay, clay representing people of all other, the seed of men, that means all other languages and tribes and all, they're all mixed. Right. So in that region, in the region of the former Roman Empire, you will see that iron will be mixed with clay. And then there will be these ten toes, the ten toes representing ten kings or ten leaders. Okay. So, and he says, when you're seeing this happen, in the days of these kings or these leaders, God, the God of heaven, will set up his own kingdom. So, in the former Roman Empire, which today we understand it covers what we refer to as the European Union. So when you look at the European Union, there are so many countries, I think like 20 some member countries, small, small, small countries all across Europe. Uh, they're loosely held. They're part of this European Union. And each of these countries, there are a mix of iron and clay. That means there are a mix of the original, uh, the people who belonged to that region. And clay means people from all other parts of the world, all mixed, very loosely held. And there are going to be 10 kings or 10 leaders coming up from this area. Now what will happen is, uh, as we go through Daniel, we will see that these 10 leaders, there will be another little horn coming who will overpower three of these ten leaders and will come into prominence. So I'll just give you an idea. Um, if you go with me to Daniel chapter 7, and uh, let me give you the exact... Uh, we will just look at verse 20. And the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up, before which three fell, namely, that horn that had eyes and a mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance was greater than his fellows. So, verse 20, Daniel 7.20. So, in Daniel 7, he sees another beast with ten horns which is a parallel to the ten toes. And then he sees another little horn, which is the Antichrist, who overpowers three of these horns. That means three of those ten leaders, he overpowers them. And they help him come into power. This, anti this little horn that speaks pompous words is the Antichrist. And you will also see, 
uh, also in, uh, uh, let me see here, chapter 9, I think it is, yeah. Um, Uh, let me just give you another reference to this. Um, so, sorry, Daniel 8. And uh, he's referring, to, he's explaining to us in Daniel 8, uh, verses 9 and 10. He talks about this little horn, um, uh, which is referring to the Antichrist. And um, and it is this little horn that that's you know that will um, Daniel eight was twelve um, that this little horn will horn will oppose the daily sacrifices and he will do all of these things uh, you know so that little horn is actually referring to the antichrist um, yeah okay so. The point is this, and, and we will look at this in detail, that there are these ten toes, or these ten horns, which represent ten leaders who come from this region, this loosely held region, which we know is the European Union, which was part of the former Roman Empire. So we, are look, we look carefully at, okay, yeah, there can be 10 leaders who can come up from the European Union. Like, the, the you know, they could be the presidents or the, now these mainly presidents, the presidents of 10 of the most powerful nations from among this loosely held region. Okay, so you're looking, who are these 10 most influential people coming out from this region? And then, what Daniel also said is, there will be a little horn, a little leader, who will come from another place. And in Daniel 8, he explains, it will, that will be from one of the regions that belonged to the Greek Empire. So, he, Daniel said, you know, he talked about Alexander the Great. After he died, his kingdom was divided into four parts. And from one of those four parts will come this little horn. So then you're also looking, okay, uh, there's going to come some leader from what was a part of the former Greek empire. And he will overpower or he will influence three of these ten leaders. So you're looking at that relationship. And these leaders will put him into power, will bring this little horn into power. That prominent one is uh, Alexander the Great. So that is uh, so when in Daniel eight he talks uh, Daniel talks about um, the the goat and the ram. Right? So he talks about uh, uh, the ram, which had two horns, which represents the Medes and the Persians. Then the goat, which had one very big horn, the goat represents the Greek Empire, very big horn that represents Alexander the Great, who became very powerful, but he died very young. And then in his, his place, four of his emperors became, his generals became leaders. Okay, so that part is already fulfilled. What Daniel did say is that from these four regions, a little horn will come, a little leader will come. Right. So, now the fourth sign that we're looking at is what Daniel said, that there will be this region of iron mixed with clay. And from there, there will be ten leaders coming. Oh, today it is possible. Right. That when we look at the European Union, so when the European Union was formed, many Bible prophecy people were very excited. Say, 
It's happening. You know what Daniel said is happening. You know, that this region is becoming a you know uh, uh, like iron mixed with clay, and we can actually have ten leaders coming who will kind of work together. But three of them will be influenced by this little horn, who is the Antichrist. And he through them he will come into power. You know? So we are looking at this also happening and say, hey, just like what Daniel said, because Daniel chapter 2 says, In the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up his kingdom. That means while these in, in the time of these leaders, it's going to happen. Seven years. And then, at the end of the seven years, the Lord Jesus will come and set up his own kingdom. Yeah. So, the fact that there can be these ten emerging leaders who will help bring up the Antichrist into his place of power becomes very interesting for us. In looking at what's happening politically in Europe and parts of Turkey and so on, Egypt, and so on. So, uh, part of the Greek Empire, of course, Greece, Syria, uh, Turkey, Syria, Egypt. Those are the big regions. So, you're looking at what is happening around there, how they are interacting with the European Union, how what kind of relationship they are having with the leaders in the European Union uh, and you're looking at that and saying yeah because this is how it's going to play out that these ten leaders will support actually three of them will be overpowered by this little horn who is the Antichrist and he will come into power through their help so you're looking at what's happening Pastor, a very silly doubt, if, if so, please ignore it. So, uh, this what we are studying all about this end times. So, uh, the Bible is there for everyone. And they the people who who goes into this situation also, they also know this, right? They have the Bible in there. They can, they can bring it and read. So, if so, it's clearly it's telling about the future, right? So, yeah. they also can read and eradicate uh, their defeat. And they can know what's happening before only. They can take some steps to to just eradicate few things like about the temple or about the uh, fights and all. That's an interesting question. Um, these are my thoughts. My my thought is first of all, I think many of these people won't pay attention to the Bible. Ah, there's a whole, uh, who's going to listen to the read the Bible? Like that, that's their attitude. I don't think, uh, especially you know, thinking about the European leaders, European Union, the leaders there, or uh, when you come on this side, Turkey and Egypt, they I don't think they even pay attention. To the script. They don't have any respect. They don't. They're not paying attention. So they, they wouldn't care, you know. Um, even if somebody goes and tells them, hey, look, see, these things are prophesied, uh, they won't, I think they won't pay attention. They are probably just, yeah. Even if they claim to be religious, it's more of a nominal, formal thing, you know, yeah, they, they may attend a service or a funeral in a church or something. But I I don't think these leaders, are, at least as far as I know, there's no real believing, Bible-believing leader that we're seeing there. There are such kind of leaders. Won't they have a minister to tell them, like, this is what, what it's there in Bible and this is what it happened? See, if, if we come to India only, if we have Prime Minister, you know, there will be so many... So much steam, intelligent team that that gave the suggestions. Mm. If it is such a big uh, an empire or a kingdom, won't they have a ministers that that to tell to this is what's happening in the Bible and this is what and about this uh, Jerusalem also about this lamb and all these things. 
when they have a little concern on these things or it's god's divine plan so it will happen like that whatever they are it's happen it will happen because god god has inspired and wrote the bible um so one thing we can say is whatever god has spoken will happen but whether you know like you're saying with the be people who will advise these presidents tell them hey this is what the bible says maybe it can maybe there could be people who are advising them i don't know i i, I haven't heard of any such thing um i know one person who told me something but i think he was just making it up <laughs> he came and he told me oh these people are studying the bible and prophecy and all that stuff uh, like there's no proof there's no evidence so I won't. I wouldn't take him seriously. Um, uh, could there be some people who are informing them and saying, "Hey, you know, the Bible has said all these things." Maybe, maybe I don't know. But will they take it seriously? I don't think so. They'll still do what they want to do, and you know, for for many of these people, it's more about staying in power, being elected. You know, uh, every, every four years is election. I have to. do something to keep myself in power it's more about that rather than uh genuinely following god yeah okay we'll just look at one more so the possibility of these 10 re- leaders coming in from that particular region because daniel was very specific in that region not just 10 leaders anywhere but from there those who are mixed with iron and clay iron representing the roman empire <coughs> from those leaders 10 you know from that region 10 leaders emerging you know today it's something that we can actually see happening before our eyes and we keep looking at it last one the possibility of a global currency system and identification system you know just again this is also so uh, amazing because Uh, and I, i think i mentioned it before maybe 30 years ago just 30 years ago we would not be thinking about uh a global identification system or a global currency you know, we when we wanted to go to the bank you physically walk to nearest bank <laughs> write some paper put money in get it out like that you had to physically do things 30 years ago today you can sit here in bangalore and you can do anything in anywhere <laughs> online i mean our our you can yeah things have changed so much in just last 30 years yeah and uh identification now even so many countries including our country india has a has a unique id for every citizen i mean not every may have got yet the other card yet but that is it's there in place every person has unique id and so many countries have implemented that some countries implemented many years ago but other countries have implemented it so you would we would not even think imagine 30 years ago these things would be there but suddenly within few decades everything is there you know and our our banking system everything is so connected you know from one bank you can send money to any bank almost any bank it's all connected now it was not like that few few just few decades ago it was not like that so difficult So in Revelation 13 when John wrote and John wrote this 2000 years ago that this antichrist and false beast this false prophet would set up a system but everybody must receive the mark of the beast and if they don't receive that id identification they cannot buy or sell he wrote this 2000 years ago you know way ahead of time about 
people receiving some identification, people having to use that to transact, buy and sell. And if you look at it literally, these things have come into place in the last few decades. Before that, it was not there. But John wrote about it 2,000 years ago. Right? So we are saying, hey, this is happening in our day, in our time, right before our eyes. You know, buying and selling, using ID to buy and sell. It's happening in our, it's happening in our day, our time. Okay? So we're saying, wow, it is possible that if this Antichrist comes and he has so much influence, he can introduce some system that I, I don't know how what, what what exactly how it will look, but some system that says you have to have this ID, only then you can buy yourself. It's possible. People is preaching to not to have that. Not to receive that yeah, receive yeah, the mark right. of the beast. And then uh, how it will be? It will be like uh, like how we got the other card. If you don't have other, you you won't so be many things you can't in do. India. Yeah, like that it will happen. Then like unknowingly, we'll do that or. So, oh, okay. So your question is. Will the Antichrist, in, I mean, will he introduce it in a way that is very, that it makes it look very normal? Like, yeah, I think that's the approach he will take. Right? That, see, it might, it should, it, it, so if you want more people to participate, you have to introduce it in a way saying, hey, it's good for you. You join, take this number, put it on you, on your forehead or your right hand. I don't know whether it's some microchip or something. I don't know how it will be introduced, but it's good for you because if you have it, you can easily buy and sell. You know, see, like nowadays, uh, go, I mean, think about the uh, uh, payment from your phone. First, when they introduced, not okay, a few people started. Now it's like almost everybody <laughs> is using it, right? It's like almost everybody. Because it's like uh, it's almost like a necessity when you go to the shop. Okay, Google Pay or whatever. Pay. Done. It makes it easy. It's a good thing for you. Makes it convenient. So, my guess is that he's going to introduce it in a way that it's a good thing to have. But what we have to be careful of is the end result is to worship the beast. No, that is the goal. You have to worship this man. So how that will be introduced and packaged, I don't know. Pastor, there is a reservation. See, uh, if we change our cash to a Christian, we won't get all the things which, which are there for a reservation people. So what they say is, if you change your cash or if you change your religion, you won't get all these things. Which are which which were given by government. Mm. If you won't change, you'll get all the things. If you change to Christian, like that's how it's happening now in then India, right? You won't yeah, get yeah. the benefits. Maybe, maybe like like that. Like it should be if, if it is doing if it is done by Antichrist, it should be done in a very normal way that unknowingly it should happen. And it it should get people, but the goal is to get them to worship. The beasts, the Antichrist. So I don't know how it will be packaged, but it will be put in such a way that it will draw the people. That is where John says, Know this, the mark of the beast, it's 666. And uh, the angels will warn, Do not receive the mark of the beast. So, you know, whoever is living at that time, they should. Watch and caref be careful and see how it is going to happen. Okay. But for, yeah. Okay. So the, the, the main point is 
we are living in a day and time when this is possible. It can happen. You know? And it is only, technology is only advancing. It's making it easier to happen. You know? uh, and uh, there may be some new things that are developed in the next few years that make it even more easy to implement something like this. Where people can receive a mark on their body, on the right hand, and uh, maybe something I don't know how it's going to, you know, what can be uh, implemented. They're actually, you know, even implanting chips inside the brain and all those kinds of things. So, you know, how quickly things can advance in the next two, three years, we don't know. So, we are in that place where Revelation 13 can actually be fulfilled. What's your question? And getting the answer. Yeah, it's, it's... Hmm. Oh, Pastor, like we have first discussed, like when John was writing some things. He wrote it according to the knowledge that he had. He had that yes. So, uh, so this uh, symbol of the beast, yes. triple six, will it be literal or it is to according to what he has known at the time he has written? Or yeah. it can be something different also. So John gave a literal number. Like he said, know the mark of the beast. It is 666. Six, six. So he gave that. Now, what exactly and how exactly that will be expressed, we don't know. Right? Is it going to be, I, I don't know, I'm just trying to imagine, is it like going to literally be this number, you know, six, actual 666, six, six, everybody put 666 six, six on your head or hand? Or is it, is it representing something? John wrote what he saw. He saw 666, six, six, he wrote it as 666. Six, six. But does that actually symbolize something, or does it mean something different? We don't know. Yeah, that's why we have to be careful. Like, uh, especially those living there at that time in Revelation 13, middle of the tribulation. That's when they need discernment to know that what is the 666? How is it being expressed? Uh, I'll, the main test is: Am I being drawn in to worship the mark of the? To worship the beast. Like, uh, we see like how the Antichrist introduces the symbol triple six. He is uh, like an access to buy something and uh, to sell, right? Yes. So is it possible for those people who are living at that time to take the mark of the beast just to trade and then still not to worship the Antichrist? I don't think so. Because from our reading of Matthew 13, uh, uh, Revelation 13, it is connected. Worship the beast. So it's all like one, you can say like one package. So there's no like, okay, I'll take this and not that. Yeah, mark the beast. So it's like one thing. Yeah. Uh, let me see if there are any questions from those online. Any questions from those online? I hope all of you are following us. We're just having some um, discussions here inside the classroom. Any questions from those online so far? OK. So let's pause here for today. Uh, we just have a little bit more to cover next week. Uh, we will go through the other signs. And then we will do a full review. And I think with that, we will wrap up this course. So we might finish the course quite early. Um, all right. So let's uh, let's pray together. And then we will uh, dismiss. Could somebody pray and dismiss?
Father, we thank you for this day, for this time, Lord, as we have studied our, about all those things, Father. Uh, help us to understand more and deeply, Father, so we can learn your word, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rowan. We'll continue this next week. God bless. Bye now.